Well, good afternoon and welcome once again to Ed's Orchids. Now, what I'm going to do today, well, I think the only thing I have to do today is repot this Dracula. Now, I've had this probably 18 months, close on two years. It is growing, but it hasn't shown any signs of producing spikes. Now, this one is Dracula Solii, a real monkey face one. If you haven't heard from it, just look, look it up on the web. It's absolutely gorgeous. Well, I'll just get the plant down and take it out of its pot and we'll have a look what's going on inside it. Well, I'll take the hangers off. Lots of people always want to know where I get these hangers from, these smallish ones. Well, I get them from uh, a dealer in Germany called Relke. R-O-E-L-L-K-E, Relke. And they're very cheap and they're very, very good. And if anybody wants to order some, the number on them is A30B. And they're, they're very, very good and cheap. Right, I've took the hangers off. So we'll just take the, uh, the labels out. I'll show you which one it is. That's it, Dracula Solii. I'll just have a look and see what it's like on the inside. Should come out quite easily. Yeah. Yeah. The funny thing about these I find is uh, you can't really tell whether the roots are good or whether they're bad because they all look, they're very fine rooted, that I'll show you in a minute. Just take a bit of this moss out. There's a leaf there with uh, black tip, so I'm going to cut that off. Give them a good clean up while I'm at it. Put it down at the bottom. That's that one done. And then we'll have a look at the uh, roots. There are the roots on this one. They're not very long, but... Uh, they don't look too bad actually, they're nice and clean, there's no black ones, so uh, I'm taking those roots as uh, as being okay. Right, you all know by now that I don't like using moss, but when it comes to Dracula, I have no alternative. So I've put some, uh, some sphagnum moss in here, it's the one you get from uh, New Zealand sphagnum moss and uh, this is the only thing I use it on and I'm just soaking it in distilled water because these plants are very very susceptible uh, to hard water if your water is very hard in the area where you live then that becomes poisonous to the plant and it will kill it so uh, you've got to use RO water or distilled water to uh, to, 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 to to promote these plants to the best. Well, the moss is uh, nice and damp now, so I've taken it out of the bucket and I've, uh, I've sort of uh, squeezed it till it's just damp. And then I put a handful of uh, sponge rock on top, which is large perlite. So we'll mix that all together and uh, we'll get the plant potted up. perlite stick into pieces of here and then we'll just put it in just put some in there like that not too uh, don't firm it down too much and then the rest I'll try and wrap it round 
the routes, even though there's not many routes there. Like that. And then we'll put that into the into the basket. Let's firm it down a little bit. Not too much. Now these, these come from the, uh, well they're in the pleurothalid group, so uh, they do require cold temperatures of a night. I mean they can stand fairly high temperatures during the day, but uh, at night time make sure they drop to 10, 11, 12 degrees, no lower than that, and they'll be fine. And. Uh, These plants are what they call oligotrophs, which means that they don't want much fertiliser. So uh, what I do, I abundantly water these and uh, I just make sure I keep them very damp. Don't overwater them, just make sure they're damp. And uh, as far as fertiliser go, I, I hardly give them any. And if I do give them some, it will be oh, one eighth of a teaspoonful every month or every six weeks, something like that. Now, as far as high temperatures go, I have this hung up in the greenhouse, so that's not bad. It goes cold at night, but uh, high temperatures are not good for them. Uh, high temperatures will kill the plant. So if you're thinking of growing these, into a living room space, I wouldn't bother. It's a definite no-no, don't do that. It will kill them. And they like a humidity well above 70 degrees, 70%. They'll stand 100% humidity. Now, as far as light goes, uh, they like a virtually a subdued light, similar to a phalaenopsis. Now, the only thing I can tell you about these is that they come from the uh, the high mountain ranges which are very cloudy and damp in uh, in the Andes in Peru and uh, that's why you've got to keep them cool all the time. Anyhow I can't tell you any more about this that's the only thing I'm going to do today and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it got one or two tips off it and uh, until I see you later thanks to all my subscribers uh, I'm, I am getting a little down on subscribers at the moment for some reason. I said it must be my videos aren't good enough or something like that. Or they're not diverse enough. But uh, if you haven't subscribed, I would really appreciate it. So until next time, thank you very much and bye.